fundamentals. I like writing fundamentals up on the board and then breaking that word up into little pieces. So the most important part for me is think of fun. That's what we're here for. We want to enjoy our experience. So we are more likely to enjoy our experience if we bring the right attitude, energy, optimism, and, and all the people around us are you know, in the same boat with us. D is for, it's a game of decisions. Probably pretty important when we're trying to find that balance of things that you're talking about. D for decisions. A, A for action or execution. All right, that's the technique part. All right, and then mental is, is again another part of those four things. The mentality of the game is absolutely critical. So that mindfulness, that concentration, that resilience, that emotional balance and adaptability and problem solving skills, really important part. And the S is for success. <music>
win their battles probably around one every three uh, times the bat or to bowl. Uh, the rest of us mere mortals, you know, we win anywhere between one and every six and ten opportunities. So we are dealing with failure or not meeting our own expectations quite often. So it's really important to find a balanced way of approaching um, reviewing your game. Reviewing your game is absolutely critical to the process of, of improvement. You mentioned their plans just now, reviewing your game, etc. Again, yeah. for the benefit of a young player, if you just delve into the various disciplines, batting, bowling, can you maybe just give them a bit of your tips and advice if they just literally don't know, they don't know where to start? Yeah, I guess as a coach, you know, if I can use my Sydney Sixers hat on there, I would approach each player on an individual basis and and have a plan with them. And, and some of those, if we talk about a batting process, we'll talk about the roles they played, the amount of times they were successful in those roles. What did the runs number look like? What did the strike rate number look like? How they, how they participated as a partner in partnerships? And we, we would come to an agreement around, you know, what does it look like? Are we happy? You know, where are the areas for improvement? Sometimes they can be physical. Sometimes they could be mental. Sometimes they could be strategic and or they could be technically based. So we've got a live conversation going on in those four areas around how to improve. So we will come up with a plan and make sure that the player in his own time is working on on each of those areas. So from a physical point of view, the player has his own responsibility to go and deal with himself and his trainers in the gym. Then from a technique point of view, that would be working with me and that's my eyes on, on the player in the game and in training and in vision of matches. Um, from a mental skills point of view, that's about the player being dynamic and open-minded about the course of change and listening to you know, the ideas and the team conversations that we have. And, and strategies also about understanding, um, you know, the opposition, the three things you need to know in the game is your game, their game, the opposition's game and the game itself. And that it, the game itself involves, um, you know, the, the conditions, the facilities that you're using, the state of the weather on a particular day. So there's lots and lots of as I say, lots and lots of opportunity for chaos, but we want to narrow that down to create some clarity. And that's really about positive mindset, going out, doing your best, having a good plan um, and, and watching and waiting for that ball and then making your best decision and then executing and then review, relax and refocus is the, is the modality from ball to ball and match to match that we use with the sixes. Are there any fundamental things that you believe that players should be doing from a training perspective? A lot of clubbies, they go on their midweek nets and then they just sometimes just can't even deliver on the weekend. If we talk about uh, on the subject of pressure, are there any fundamental, whether it be technical things, mental things that you believe players should be doing in the build-up of the game to assist them when it comes to... Well. Oh, uh, the weekend? Well, again, that's a really critical part. And I'll, again, I'll defer to the Sixers. It's absolutely required that our group, we have a preparation talk before we go to the training session about what's our focus, what's our plan. And that will, some of those uh, will be highlighted by how the team's going, whether we're, what parts are going well, what parts need to be worked on. So we might attend to those in a, in a training session, but there's an absolute uh, plan about going in there. There's a focus individually for each player. We encourage them to put themselves mentally into different game scenarios to chop the session up. And so they're working through various scenarios so that they can, again, make judgments about whether whatever they're doing in the net situation is working or not. And an absolute intensity of, of, of effort and, and mindset focused on that ball. It's not just drifting through a session ever. We want our bat ball to be very competitive. So, you know, we want to celebrate the wins that the bowlers have or the wins that the batters have. We'll often stop training and have conversations around how we think the session's going. Who's identified batters that are batting well? Who's identified bowlers that are bowling well? And what is it about what the team is seeing 
on the players are feeling at, at and during a training session. So there's a really dynamic edge of, of review and reflect uh, and training that hopefully gives us that pattern of improvement that we're looking for. So how much focus do you think that uh, from a technical perspective, players should be putting on their game, whether it be batting or bowling? Sometimes, given the intricacies of the game, players, you, know, you hear, they almost get scrambled. You hear commentators, sometimes they get their mind is scrambled. Do you think players should be focusing a lot on the technical side of the game or can it be sometimes overanalyzed? Well, I guess... Beliefs you... and philosophies and in, that, in, in the overall topic of pressure that they put on themselves. I think they're all important elements, those ones I talked about, the physical, the mental, the tactical and the technical sides of the game. So they all have to work in harmony. Uh, but when you mention fundamentals, I like, like writing fundamentals up on the board and then breaking that word up into little pieces. So the most important part for me is think of fun. That's what we're here for. We want to enjoy our experience. So we are likely to enjoy our experience if we bring the right attitude, energy, optimism, and, and all the people around us are you know, in the same boat with us. D is for, it's a game of decisions. Probably pretty important when we're trying to find that balance of things that you're talking about. D for decisions, A, A for action or execution. All right, that's the technique part. All right, and then mental is, is again another part of those four things. The mentality of the game is absolutely critical. So that mindfulness, that concentration, that resilience, that emotional balance and adaptability and problem solving skills, really important part. And the S is for success and satisfaction. So that's how I like to have a narrative around the fundamentals of batting or bowling or fielding or being a, a good team player. And I use that word often. We have a language in the Sydney Sixers called the F words, and that's one of the, the key F words that describe to players how we want to pre prepare, how we want to play, how we want to review. So, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a fun time working on your technique as well and assessing as a session goes along or a game goes along, you know, what's working, what's not working. And even the best players are having trouble with, you know, their techniques at different times. And that can be grip, bat swing, stance, movement to the ball, forward and back, also, and the timing of that. And we're seeing right at the moment, I'm watching IPL every night and I'm seeing, you know, amazingly Virat Kohli finding some difficulty in the batting technique process at the moment. And in terms of me, my assessment there is, He's not arriving at the ball at the right time. So he's got to step very early and then he's playing with his hands. So that's a technique thing. But, you know, it happens to the best and it's going to happen to people learning their games as well. But again, if you approach your training sessions, you know, with optimism and curiosity, curiosity is a great uh, lubricant for prog progress, as I call it. So you know, being interested in improving your technique and watching other players, you know, bat, bowl and field, you know, should inspire and motivate you to keep, you know, moving along the the railroad of, of progress. You mentioned success there as one of the buzzwords. How should a cricketer define their own personal success, do you believe? Oh, I guess, uh, you know, that's part of what the, I also have another little thing called uh, vapor. Which, and, and it's a little analogy that is V is for vision. What's my vision for my game? What am I looking to create here? Where do I see my ambition? So what's that vision? Then I have to analyse where I'm at. Am I close to it or am I miles away from it? So whatever that answer is, is then I have to come up with my plan. How am I going to go about, you know, fixing this situation or moving towards, you know, that vision? then you've got to experience actioning it and then you review that process and that happens for and i encourage my players to do that every session every game every season on their journeys and as i deal with players often i'm dealing with them for a 10 or so year period so i call that my builder generation player so we're building a career that starts with the vision and the players 
you know, have each season, each session, each game, understand where they're at. Did I have a successful game? Was it a middling game? Was it a poor game? If it was a poor game, okay, what were the reasons around that? And we approach that, you know, in a really balanced, calm, methodical and collected way. And then we search for the answers and we go and train around that. So that's that's the process for me about, you know, how to aim for the stars. And again, you know, if you're an under 14, 15 year old player, then you want to play in the first grade team or you come to a new club, it might you might start at fourth grade and you move through your targets the the, the first grade team and then it's a county team and then it's you know a, a national side so um, my job when I was coaching for Victoria was to win competitions produce Australian players and improve my players so those are the three tasks and I'm sure the England coach or, or the county coaches at the moment would have those three things ringing in their ears about improving their players winning competitions and producing English players. Great, great fun as a coach to, you know, be in that stream. You did touch on it earlier as well in this chat about having clarity. How important do you believe for a player to have clarity in their role in the side, whether it be batting, bowling, all rounder, etc.? And do you think again that lack of clarity can almost put pressure on a player, whether they're playing at the highest level or a young clubby? Yeah, one of our one of our other F words is about flexibility. And so if you're not going to approach your cricket, because it's such a, a cricket, whether it's a T20 game one day or four day te- and, and or a test match, it provides so many dynamic circumstances and situations that you've got to be flexible. Your mind and you've got to be ready to adapt to that game situation. Uh, probably the openers in terms of batting and the opening bowlers are the people that have got the, the most clarity because they're setting the scene and starting the process off. Everything behind that, you're, you're manoeuvring yourself to deal with the game situation. So you need flexibility. So those sort of two, you've got to start with flexibility and then you've got to have clarity, which is about you know, understanding the game, which is that strategy. How should I play this situation now? How is my partner and I going to approach this situation now? And and, and take those conversations. And, and that will be, lit, be led that information by coaches through historical uh, reckonings of our games gone past. And so, you know, in the Sydney Sixers, we've got a what we call a laboratory of T20 cricket where there's a really dynamic, conversation from season to season going on uh, where we navigate you know game situations so when it gets tight in a game our players are very clear about you know they've got an opportunity to win this match from any position and it happens through our process of winning by design and we've got lots of little nuances around that that uh, have give the players the tools to uh, you know, win more games than we lose, I guess. Yeah, a lot of commentators also say that players should just play their natural game. When you hear that, what thoughts are you thinking as a coach? Um, again, as a young player, if I'm talking with young players, you know, that is such an you know, open-ended, open-ended comment. And I think at early stages of the game, I think you should be open-minded and curious enough to think that you've got the opportunity to to grow and flourish and that you don't really have a natural game. Uh, you might like to hit the ball in a particular area. You might like to take the game on and be really aggressive and ramp up the risk in your, in your game. Same from a bowling point of view. You might, you know, the coach might be talking about line and length and you might you just go in and think you're going to bowl the biggest spinning ball every time you bowl it or the fastest ball you can bowl it. But there are opportunities to coach around that and to inform the players about the best, you know, tend to have control about what they're doing. And and I think playing your natural game is a bit of a, an excuse. It, it's a, it might be a mental framework that you can work from, uh, but I think there's lots of other things that have to go around 
we want you to be relaxed and be comfortable about your preparation and confident about the skills that you're bringing to the table. You might be unsure about them, but you know that's part of learning through experiences in the game. When the when the captain goes out on the field, a lot of thought and uh, of him just being the individual that's out there by himself. But do you encourage your players to also assist the captain and almost alleviate that pressure that that he feels on himself as an individual? Yeah, most teams I deal with, we dump leadership groups and we encourage that uh, leadership group implies that that group over there are you know, more into you know, running everything that's happening. Uh, and we and my teams have a bit more of a collegiate style where we're expecting leadership uh, to come from all places, whether they be from the most senior players in the group to the youngest players in the group. There's different ways to display leadership. The captain certainly has the responsibility of, of making decisions around, you know, batting orders and bowling changes and field settings. But indeed, you know, our team are encouraged to provide, you know, sustenance and support to our captain through ideas. And ultimately he will, he will make his choice. I've been absolutely blessed as a coach to have some of the best captains uh, in the business you know, make me look good. And Moses Henriques and Cameron White and Matthew Wade, uh, David Hussey, people like that have been captains. Jamie Cox, another one down in Tassie, Ricky Ponting, also that have shown the way in terms of, you know, uh, that captain coach relationship and how it can work very effectively. From a skill set perspective, do you believe that a player, say a batter, for example, if you've got they talk, you hear again on online uh, uh, on commentators etc they talk about having core fundamentals again around their game when it comes to technique and then they can play all formats do you believe players uh, need certain elements to be able to play all formats whether it be the batting or bowling or do you again well, is that I, just an excuse well, i guess they've got to have a capacity to um to deal with those fundamentals of the game they they need to have you know, an ability in all of those areas, uh, and, and it's 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 working those those things out and improving those things that you know ha, has the player, you know, being a, a useful uh, you know, member of the side. I think, uh, yeah, that that's all I could really say about about that thing. When we're looking at players, uh, we want players to be humble, hungry and smart. So humble is about a style of person that fits into a team. Hungry is about commitment to winning and work ethic and getting better. And smart's not being about academically smart, it's being about, you know, have being a wanting to be an expert with a beginner's mind. So you've got this curious approach to the game and the best players are really curious about the game and they often look are looking and learning and growing their their mind, their cricket mind, because the strength of the mind is going to is going to you know hold sway in the heat of battle. That ability to control the mentality, to use the strategy, and execute physically. Um, when I think of a batting routine, I'm thinking of the bowler at the top of his mark. So he the batter's preparing for the ball, and he sees the bowler running in. So he's He's seeing the bowler's action. He's making a decision when the ball comes out of his hand. Then he's striking the ball and then he's reviewing what just happened. Now, only the movement of hitting the ball involves technique. All those other phases of the bowler coming in to the end result involve your mindset and your strategy play. So isn't it incredible that there's five elements there Four of them don't involve technique, one does, and the others sat up sitting around that are about your mental skills and your strategic skills. So our coaching needs to be uh, leaning into those areas as well. And it's tough because as coaches, we're not experts in these areas, but we need to steer our players into books, into watching matches and interpreting matches and what would I do in that circumstance and having conversations around those things. And then all about all, all of my teams, there is, you know, an expectation that we'll have conversations around 
our national team while it's playing during the Ashes or watching the World T20 Cup and having conversations around what would you do in that circumstance? Greg, it's been a fascinating chat. I do appreciate your time. Just to right. end on, what is your best tip for a young player? The game for you. Oh, is to I guess the best tip is to is to love the game. You know, br bring it, bring a really optimistic um, you know mindset to every training session, to every game. Learn how to deal with failure whilst you're chasing um, success in the game. Embrace your teammates listen to your coach and learn about the game. Take some time, effort and energy to go and pick up a, a book, Mindful Cricket, Graham Winter, beautiful book for young players uh, on how to improve your mental skills. I'm sure there's many books all around uh, the world that delve into that particular area of the game, but you know, really enjoy the experience because that fun part of the fundamentals is what it's all in about, about. So, um, you know, I really encourage the players, the players to go in and commit your time, energy and effort. And when you're not there, live the rest of your life, uh, you know, full of, full of the same sorts of, you know, optimistic um, view on, the, on your life as you, as you approach your cricket. Greg, perfect. Thank you again for your time today. Really do appreciate it and all the best for the, for the weeks and months ahead. So thank you. My pleasure. I hope we see you again and we can talk more about cricket. The Neil Kagram Cricket Love Stories, Greg Shepherd. Thank you.